going over some key points in databases so the entire thing in the flat table is known as the table. Each row is known as a record and each column is known as a field. So these are data types and this is the input types we can put into our fields and record. Again, the field is the columns, the rows are the records. In order to obtain information from databases, we have to query it. We have to find a language or a syntax that works. So that might be SQL, structured query language, or it could be no SQL. And there are many, many like denominations etc. SQL was first released by IBM in 1974 and it is an international standard for the majority but no SQL is gaining in popularity. So why are flat databases just getting so outdated? Why are they so problematic and what can we do about it? The more we expand our flat table and add more fields and records the longer it takes to process a query. That's because empty fields occupy memory. Since the computer must store the structure of the database, whether the fields are used or not, and queries will run more slowly on large tables than smaller ones. So the larger the table's going to get, the longer it's going to take. And that is why we use relational databases to divide and conquer in terms of querying time. So when we're talking about relational databases, the idea is we need to think about entities. Entities are often described as tangible, intangible objects such as like uh, festivals, like if you're doing an event, if you're doing um, a course, things of this nature, things that require more information to be stored within that entity and so it is called entity. Within those entities we have instances so for example if I go to festivals we could have the Download Festival, we could have Glastonbury uh, Festival sorry, and those are instances. So if we work in a school the entity is students and the instances would be student names. Entities are described using attributes. So for example working in a school if you've got some students for example their name, date of birth or contact information etc can be used as an attribute towards the entity. So we have the entity that are students okay so that's the whole like table of students so then we have instances which are the students names the attributes of the students and then we obviously use our data types our various data types we mentioned earlier to use in those fields for the different values of the attributes oftentimes we will find something called a primary key and this is often a field aka a column which has a unique identifying number. These are used because often in databases we might have people who have the same name so we can't use that as a way to relate one database to another because we're going to come into redundancy people where they have multiple of the same name and we're going to wind up drawing everybody's information. So often what we'll find is that most of these tables come with a primary key and then we can use that to join up all the databases in relational databases and this joining table which is essentially made up of a primary key and for example a could be the course, it could be what year a student is in or what class they are in and so this table of primary key and class could essentially be called the joining table which creates a many to many relationship which means that we are then able to start joining all the tables together at ease. This is the brilliance of relational databases in that we don't have to now go into each student's um, record or instance we can simply make a change to one course 
on the database and that will impact every single other person who shares that course code. Thus creating smaller tables, many small, many to many small tables that create very fast query times, less admin times, and we get to scale these databases pretty much as much as we want. We can. And that's why relational databases are usually the more preferred choice over flat databases. Thanks for watching, hope this helps.